Good day everyone, it's 20th November 2018 and you're watching India's Biggest Comeback, episode number 4. Hey everyone, I'm Nidika Bahel, the international best-selling author of the book, The Queen of the Comeback and a Celebrity Life Coach. And I'm super excited today because today it's almost like a dream come true moment for me. When I was conceiving this show, and as you all know it, the reason we decided to do this show is because when I was fighting my comeback through clinical depression, one of the things that kept me going was uh, listening to motivational stories and listening to, uh, you know, success stories and comeback stories of many people. Um, you know, whether it was um, through a video, through an audio cassette, or, or maybe even reading a book. And that's when I always used to think that one day when I'm normal, when I'm, you know, when I'm good to go again, that I'll be able to bring some of these stories to you guys uh, through a medium which is um, user friendly and. Um, Every time we thought about conceiving India's biggest comebacks, the only person that came to my name is this lady. Uh, she's a Padma Shri. She's an Arjuna Award winner. She's the first Indian uh, Paralympian, first Indian woman to, you know, go to Paralympics and, of course, win a silver medal there. And uh, every time my team and I would sit together and talk about this show and they would ask me who you'd like to be having on the show and I would say, I'd like... I'd like her, and I'm going to give her name out in a bit. But, you know, I would say I would like her, and they would say, who else? And I would say, I'll Google and get back to you. <laughs> because I never knew who my second guest was going to be. Um, it's very fortunate that she's on the show with me today. So let's welcome Deepa Malik. Hi, I think it's a dream come true moment for me also uh, to be here live from the Facebook headquarters. Um, it's quite a status symbol, actually. <laughs> so, um, thank you for this uh, status update today. How sweet. Thank you so much. Deepaji, you have no idea how proud I feel to be able to do this today. Just to sit in a presence of a woman who's such a fighter, it's like, yeah. it's just life-changing. And in whatever interaction we've had... The, the, the fighter is going to be a little ambiguous. Don't say that in front of my hubby. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Fair <yeah>. enough. <laughs> All right, so just to open a conversation here, Deepaji, I'm just yeah. going to begin by asking you the first question. Um, your life as we all know it, is like a living testimony of what a mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. You know, the whole battle of mind over body. Wow. 19 years ago, at age 29, you were asked to choose between living your life in a wheelchair or death. Could you share with our viewers what did the doctors tell you and how did you cope with that news? Um, I had my first tumor as a child uh, when I was about five and a half years old. That's when parents noticed deterioration and um, the CT scans and the MRIs were not that uh, available at those days. So it kind of carried on for a year before they could actually zero down to what it was. And then it was a struggle of two years of continuous rehab post the surgery. But I walked again. Right. So at the age of 29, when doctors did say that, I thought maybe these are those words which they try to say to be on the safer, safer side. side right. But at the end of the day, like how I walked again as a child, um, I was prepared to take that long term two, three years off right. to kind of regain it. Right. Um, and um, I, I told myself I'm going to be very honest uh, with the rehab training, etc. Uh, the way my parents had uh, done it for me. Right. Um, and uh, so, so, I mean, Honestly, I never thought it's going to be a permanent, permanent situation because I had a lot of faith uh, in myself. Normally, people do not reach um, that stage of um, uh, health and mobility right. because they do not give attention to the rehabilitation. Right. I had experienced rehabilitation as a child. I had seen the sincerity of my parents. 
I had done this very honestly for my elder daughter because she had met with an accident and had hemiplegia as a child. Oh, so the yeah. the trend of rehab was already on, and All I right. thought I'm going to take it forward. Right. But uh, well, uh, so that one thing which helped me go through it, that hope to be able to overcome it uh, in terms of walking again. Right. And second, of course, uh, I I think motherhood gave me a lot of strength because right. I wanted to be around my children. I wanted to live, right? And I wanted to live under any condition, whether it was a wheelchair or not, because uh, the mother at that time was uh, ready to barter anything to be around, to be around her kids. kids. So that became quite a strength. Wow. And of course, uh, there was a lot of emotional dealing post that, and it was frustrating when I was not able to use my limbs at all, right. in spite of all the rehab, and then. Um, a lot of emotional turmoil when doctors did try to tell me, "Look, we told you it's going to be a permanent situation." But right. uh, so yes, it it took a while. But uh, and like I said, uh, there were phases. I'm not born with a woman who wears uh, a red cape and flies around, who's a superwoman. And you know how I am termed now. Right. Uh, how everybody introduces me. You just did that. But um, I have evolved. Right. I have learned to deal with it. And. Um, so, even now, when I look back, or if I just open the uh, this thing of my diary and I see the kind of things that I used to write when I just got paralyzed, and the kind of things I write now, are two very different, different. state of mind. Hundred percent. Ultimately, it's how you treat your mind and your thoughts. Very true. So, is it true that when when you were you know when you got this news that um, that you actually were getting prepared to... You didn't want to share this news with anyone because your yes. husband was posted in Kargil yes. and you kind of prepared the whole household in a way that suppose your return took longer or it never happened, that things would be in place. I, I think, yes, and I give a lot of uh, credit to my parenting. Mm -hmm. My father especially, of course, God bless his soul, I lost him just this year. But I have seen him as as a person who would immediately switch to solution mode. How's lovely. Uh, uh, whatever, I mean, instead of wasting time, and that's what I try to teach through my life, so instead of wasting time and harping upon what's going wrong, uh, he would always switch to a solution made to find out how we can repair it. Right. So um, that's what I did. I, I wasn't, I, I married very young, um, and I did not have that kind of education or exposure to my credit. Right. Because I've been brought up in a very close atmosphere of army cantonment and uh, became an army wife. Right. So that was the only life I knew. Very strong. I, I didn't know anything outside. Right. Uh, but um, that was the time when my husband was in the field area, the Kargil war was on. Yes. And uh, my father was also working with a corporate. At that point of time, he was abroad. Right. Uh, and it was just my mother and I didn't want to uh, create a, you know, Press the panic button. Panic switch. Yes. Yes. And uh, so since I had heard that there will be uh, some kind of changes in my body and I will not be able to cope without certain adjustments right. and adaptations, right. I made a conscious choice of learning about it by talking to people, talking to doctors, talking to rehab trainers and, right. and whatever best I could do, I did. Um, yes. And some... You know, uh, I think necessity is uh, mother of invention. When yes. you feel the need to do something, you immediately come up with innovative ideas to deal with it. Absolutely. You have to feel the need, actually. Yes. And that's, that's something, again, I say that unless you feel the need. And for me, that time, the need was to make it as uh, workable uh, for everyone. For everyone. Yeah. So I think that helped. <laughs> Okay, so you know what were the next next few days like? Like, did you speak to any friends at least because you you decided consciously not to talk to family about it? Uh, you know that that's um, such a sweet coincidence. Now that I'm here in Mumbai and I'm sitting with you, I chose to stay with the same cousin uh, with whom I had shared. Uh, oh, they were not giving me my MRI report right. uh, alone. Right. Uh, I had gone to Dulabji Hospital in uh, Jaipur for all the checkups and everything and. They said, ma'am, aapke saath kaun hai? Who is with you? Wow. I said, I have alone. He says, no, no, you come back with somebody mm. before we mm. hand over the uh, this thing. I said, why? He said, no, somebody else has to sign. You know, patient ka sign nahi chalta hai. Mm. Uh, something mm. like that. So I, from there I went to the same cousin. He's my favoritist cousin. And I oh, went sweet. to his house and I said, let's go together. And today again, it's such a 
uh, happy moment for me today and life has come full circle, full circle and I'm coming yes. from his house. So yes, he was one person I shared it with. How lovely. And um, uh, there was not much time because the doctors barely gave me seven days to celebrate seven. walking and rush and get this whole tumor thing sorted. It was huge and it was, they were very scared that it shouldn't burst. Right. Uh, because if it wasn't handled the right way, it could damage more neurons more, yeah. and... Uh, Probably I would have lost the grip, the arms. At least I'm left with my arms and my neck. Yeah. Uh, well, that, and that, that's quite a lot I made with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. So, you know, when, when, the, when you were going to the operation theater, you did two things. One oh, was, you heard about that? Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> so you requested the doctor for something. Two yes. things, right? Yeah. Would you like to share the audience uh, what those two yeah, things Yeah, two things. One was definitely if I could walk to the operation theater yeah. because uh, you know so many times in our lives we take everything for granted yes do we ever get up and we, we're so busy in the rat race in trying to get things which we don't have that we miss out on the little pleasures and blessings of what we have yeah that morning was a day when I actually realized that I had legs yeah and I looked down and I said I want to walk on them before I actually cannot because I went in walking in terrible pain and spinal pain, but so that was the first thing I asked. And um, trust you me, the three stories stairs that I took, I still wonder why people crowd the elevators, those who are walking. I mean, just for one, one floor, uh, they do not want to make space for people with special needs or pregnant ladies or say, senior citizens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they just want to crowd. Uh, the elevators without even realizing that they have legs <laughs> and, and second thing of course I was uh, wanting to know if my hubby was alive because he was in the war zone right. and uh, it was important for me as a parent to know because I had signed uh, on the operation note which was an indemnity bond because they said it's going to be 20 hour long surgery, surgery. A very and it was a redo surgery because I had already suffered the tumor as a Correct. child and they were Correct. reopening the spine and they were to play with brain stem neuron connections Ouch. and um, sometimes when the body is under anesthesia for so long it does slip into coma right um, so they had prepared me for all that so i wanted to be very sure that if i don't wake up right at least the He's children there. should have one parent so right. i said can i speak to him somehow or no and you know and then of course uh, i had a very brief 30 second interaction with him which was <laughs> yes which i think is uh, life changing for anybody who hears it yes um i i uh, when i put on those microphones and and it it was again i'm talking about two decades ago so Correct. the system of communication also not that uh, advanced so you had to like press a button say over and like hello bikram over they say i will never walk again over and he from the other side just said don't worry about your legs over. I'm going to carry you in my arms all my life over. Wow. And uh, it just, that's what I say, a good communication at the right time yeah. uh, develops so much of faith. But uh, there is a part two to it. At that point of time, the man who gave me the most courage actually also got smitten and bitten by the stereotype. Right. The best thing that he thought for me was uh, to take me home uh, make a comfortable room for me and put me there with lots of help. Right. But that for the stereotypically mindset people around, relatives, friends, everybody said Deepa is so lucky. Yeah. She has a husband and a set of in-laws who are taking good care of her. Yes. But in that journey, I was like somebody who was confined who was bedridden and being nursed right who was somebody who was homebound uh, somebody who was ill and had to be taken care of right somebody who could not be in charge right so we confuse help yes um, we confuse affection we confuse uh, so I I mean it's there's a paradox there yes. <laughs> when everybody was uh, looking at him like a hero I was looking at him like somebody who had put a full stop to my life Correct. by taking such good care, care of, of me. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I get it. I completely understand because 
you know, I mean, he was there, which was very important because yes. you need that support at that moment. But at some point, you know, if you mm. if you tell mm. a person that, okay, you know, we are here to take care of you and you'll be taken care of for the rest of because your life. Because you yeah. can't travel. Correct. Now you can't, can't move out of the house. Correct. You can't battle the infrastructural challenges. Correct. It is difficult to transport this body. It is difficult, right. uh, you know. So instead of uh, creating the regular world inclusive for me right i was made a recluse with a lot of comforts yes yes and that it's like being jailed in your own house you know it's the feeling of ek ek badi sundar kavita hoti thi ki kahin bhali hai katu nibori is sone ki maida se yes so sometimes you need to go out and eat those bitter fruits Absolutely. from the nature from the trees rather than living inside and eating uh, you know a uh, some kind of sweet or like maida is basically you yes. getting grains in hand yes so i think that also fueled a lot of fire in me because i did not want to settle for the stereotype so did your relationship get changed or damaged it, as a result of that uh it it i won't say it got damaged but uh, temporarily i mean temporarily definitely i i felt that uh, it was a love marriage right uh it is a love marriage no 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 there's no was in it i we are very happily married and we we married for set of interests common interests and hobbies which was biking wow. outdoors fishing traveling wow. road journeys amazing and uh, how could someone not continue uh towards creating those opportunities for me right and uh, get bitten by the stereotype like yeah. this was not the deepa he married yeah he was willing to accept the new deepa but i was not willing to uh, uh, let someone decide who deepa had to be had to be fair enough fair so enough. that's yeah. where this whole uh, journey began which i called like a mission ability beyond disability right. and yeah. i had to and and society also so it became a personal journey but there were also certain ideals from the society which 100%. were imposed that 100%. oh my god you know what's going to happen uh, to the children right uh, how is she going to now be a mother how is she going to feed the kids she's going to be a financial liability on the family the family is so nice but ultimately they're service class people there has to be a nurse maid for my catheterization there has to be a regular physiotherapy there has to be we have to upgrade up system of transportation and right. travel right i cannot travel in trains anymore or i cannot travel on a two wheeler obviously right so these questions became my inner strength 100%. these doubts that were imposed on me and then i started sorting it uh, <laughs> one after the other <laughs> and i didn't realize that i was actually making a social impact right my goals my wish list uh of my comeback right uh and when i say comeback your book says bounce back yes. but i always use the word bounce forward right so right. i wanted everybody to bounce forward with me seeing me the way i want people to see me absolutely and i didn't want them to uh identify me just uh with the medical condition that i was suffering right. i wanted them to look beyond that yeah uh we kind of uh, typecast people yeah. and i yeah. didn't want to get typecast by a wheelchair bound deepa malik yeah and i think i think uh, you know just the fact um, that you're you know you're always seated like a queen i yes, think that's um, beautiful isn't it i mean in its own way i uh, uh, i mean i'm very proud of my chair 100% whatever i've achieved uh, as a wheelchair person as a wheelchair Absolutely. user It, this wheelchair has given me a new perspective to life it has given me a new uh, kind of movement in life right uh, literally with pun intended a movement that i went yes. on to yes yes uh, it it's given me certain aims and goals it has assisted me uh, it, it, it just takes me everywhere so i am not uh, unhappy about the chair i'm yeah. i'm very proud of my chair uh, but i did not want people to know me just because of my chair. 100% of course yes so it is a paradox there yes yes you know and i think one i mean just uh, erasing you... the chair in the eyes of people does not mean that i do not want to be known as a wheelchair user right. i want to be known as a wheelchair user who's accepted as just another regular person but i have to say deepa ji you know just when you especially when today when we just met and you know you just entered like 
it's amazing how the wheelchair is not even visible because your persona and your charisma is so strong. That's that's something I want to share, not just with people out there, but also people who are going through this phase or this physical challenge in their life. Right. I very strongly believe that people will look at you the way you look at yourself. Right. So as long as I was looking at myself as a patient, uh, I I was sad and I allowed the others to define my condition and what I needed to, uh, you know, in this lifetime, hair on, I was sad. Right. But the day I took charge and the day I said, okay, this, these are the things. But again, uh, when I did decide to go on on a journey, right. um, whatever I wanted to do, uh, they, you know, a lot of women ask me, uh, hey, you, you had this whole crazy idea of starting a restaurant or you just wanted to cross a river swimming. Uh, did your husband stop you? Uh, hmm. Did he allow you to do this? Yeah. <laughs> so the good part is that I never had to seek permission to succeed. Fair enough. Yes. And I, I think, think that itself speaks a lot of uh, his support. Yes. He was physically not there to create opportunities for me. Definitely. Or to define a line. And uh, after a point, he also felt that probably I needed to do it my way. Right. Uh, I needed to discover and feel the sense of achievement. Yeah. So I think there's a very important point here, although it's not part of my questions because you've but because you've touched upon it, we'll go there. Is this whole belief that women have that I need to be allowed to do something and I cannot decide for myself? Yes. You know, I mean, maybe you want to just you know just give a message yeah, there so, on that. So, so that's that's uh, you know I think uh, this also comes when we lack faith in ourselves. Uh, you have to have a very strong self-belief and a will to learn. Yeah. Because for me, I didn't know how to open a bank account. I didn't know how to run a restaurant. I did not know how to, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, cook a certain food or to create a menu or, or to uh, run the tables. Or if I go, I did not know how to swim in this body. I had right. to relearn. But because I had the confidence to learn, right. uh, and I knew that uh, I was open to adapting to change quickly. Right. I understood that I can do certain things. Right. And because women probably wait for others to learn for them. Yes. Is when I think where we kind of get uh, into this taking permission mode. Right. So if, if you have the confidence to learn something and you create that confidence in the eyes of the other person who cares for you. It's not about always trying to defeat the other person or, right. or you know, um, outrightly be a rebel. Right. Sometimes people hold you back because uh, they care for you. Yes. They, they want you to be secure and safe Absolutely. and not take a chance. But when you bring that whole faith and exude that confidence that you have learned about that new journey right. and right. you'll be able to pursue it. Yeah. I think even it's it's also that, you know, people want to relate with you and they want to continue to relate with you and nobody likes to be outside the comfort zone. So if yes. they have a concept of who this person is in their mind, yes. they want to keep you there. And when they see you growing beyond a certain point, yes. they just get uncomfortable with it and also try to stop you as a result of that. Um, Probably not even realizing that they're doing it, but it's just, you know, they just want to be close to you again. Uh, yeah, I think mostly it comes out of concern. I look at it very positively. I no, no, no. I, I, I'm saying it just like yes. that. But I'm just saying that it's not. It's such a subconscious process that it's probably not even, you know, it's not even something that they can figure it out. Okay, so Deepa Ji, you inspire millions of people with your zest for life. That we all know, right? You're a mother of two and avid biker, an ace swimmer, a rally driver with four Limca Adventure Awards to your name. Yes. First physically Crazy. challenged, I have to actually read this because I can't even <laughs> memorize, there's so many accomplishments. Okay. First physically challenged person to receive license by Federation of Motorsports Clubs of India. It's yeah. incredible. First woman ever to represent India at Paralympics and win a silver medal. The oldest um, Arjuna Award winner, you know, yes. who's still playing sport, yes, right? Active. When most people retire, you're still playing. Yes. Padma Shri and now an Asian Paragames bronze medalist. Please, could you share with us? So, series? I have to take these beauties out. They they, yes. <laughs> were, they were considered a bronze and they were not probably given their due because I think we are gold struck country. Right. Right. A medal is a medal and these are the latest two Ooh. beauties. And with this, my total tally is... Um, uh, is uh, here they are. Yeah. 
There, there, there. Awesome. So, uh, and I'll beautiful. tell you how these two uh, bronze are for me more than a gold and how unique they are. Uh, this one is for Javelin. Yes. I win it consecutively in the third Asian Games. Amazing. And in spite of it being a bronze because it was a clubbed category and we went on a... Um, on a point system, right. which is against the world record. So it was no way an Asian game medal. It is almost like a world, world, world wow. medal because uh, we are being given these medals on the points that we collect against a world record. Amazing. So it becomes automatically becomes a world uh, tournament yes. or a thing. This medal has created a new Asian record in uh, my F53 Javelin category. Plus with this medal in Javelin, I become the only, the only female athlete in the country to win consecutively successive three medals continuously in three Asian Games. Oh my God. I think that needs so, an applaud. Can we <laughs> applaud for her? Yeah. So that makes this medal special. This one is special because this was won in Discuss. I have never done Discuss internationally. Yes. I lost my dad in the month of uh, April and May we finished with all the last rites and the rituals. Uh, they had announced in month of February as there's going to be a new event in my category, which is Discus. So technically, I actually started learning Discus after I had finished with the treatment and the departure of my father's soul okay. from the so world. It's like three months, So right? yes, and in three months, I could make an Asian medal in a new event new learning, Amazing. new practice, new skill, simultaneously preparing and making an Asian record wow. in Javelin. Amazing. So you can do it. You can do it. You of course you can. <laughs> and, and sometimes a bronze is also special. Of course, it is. <laughs> a medal is a medal is a medal yes. is a medal. Yes. You know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. And I think um, uh, what's interesting for me is that every single, every single time you've played a sport, you've had to change it because, you know, the first time you played it, it, you know, like you played shot put and then, you it know, just, there was no more shot put to be played. <laughs> so, no, it starts with swimming. Oh, it, it, okay. just, it just starts with swimming because I, I debuted as a swimmer right. in 2006. Right. Till 2008, for three years, I did swimming. But, and that's what I teach when I do my corporate lectures. Right. I said, there are times when you're dedicated, uh, you're working very hard, you're best in your field. But when it comes to a competition, uh, you are not growing, right. you stagnate. Right. Uh, I was winning the national goals, but I wasn't making a mark internationally in swimming because my body has these issues of temperature control. Uh, I have lack of sensation, right. uh, bladder control, and uh, the temperature of the body. That's why you see me wearing always a set of warmer clothes than Correct. the regular, regular people. people. And uh, swimming in cold weather, in cold water, was getting challenging for my body. Doctors stopped me from doing it because they said you will get into hypothermia and you'll have a cardiac arrest Ouch. if you practice in cold winter months in cold swimming pool water. So not getting heated uh, swimming pools with uh, temperature regulated pools. Right. So the lack of infrastructure availability was right. actually the cause. It wasn't me, my focus, uh, my jest to win. But I wasn't getting these heated pools to train all around the year. Right. So I wanted to break that whole stigma of not being able to make a record or win a bigger medal. That's where I got excited about crossing a river and telling people that, look, I am a serious swimmer. Right. I can create a record and do strange things. <laughs> but it's not happening because I'm not able to train. train yeah. And then after re-evaluating myself, I learned javelin and at the age of 40... Wow. I switched to becoming a serious athlete from a swimmer right. after creating that That's world record. That's normally the age yes. when people, sports athletes yeah, are retiring, and, right? Um, and it's been a roller coaster because it is a strange journey. I uh, start as an athlete for 2012 London Paralympics. I first win a medal in the first Asian right. Games, becoming the first ever woman in athletics to win a medal. Right moving on to winning one in the World Championship right. and getting all set for the London Paralympics yes. in 2012 in Javelin. But it doesn't happen. Uh, I somehow am not able to represent India at the London Paralympics. Okay. So I don't give up because everybody thought that now having won the Arjuna Award, right. I'm going to give up. Right. But I 
like I said, I did not allow others to define, define my dreams. Yes. I continued and in 2014, I made another Asian record. I picked up my second Asian medal. Wow. Um, and I was feeling confident about Javelin hereafter. I said, now I'm going to win a medal in Javelin. But when 2015, the list of events is out for the Rio Paralympics, shot put is wow. my major event. Wow. And so a new challenge, a new skill. You finish winning a medal in 2016, uh, you work very hard from ninth world ranking. You make a silver medal. You are now feeling confident about uh, shot put. The next Paralympics, it is discussed. Discuss, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so now yeah. I'm learning a new skill. And um, uh, going forward, like what what's next from here? Like what kind of events would you like to participate in or win? Or is there something that's lined up for you? Yeah, there's a lot of wish lists. And I, I have had a very successful uh, career with two twenty three international medals and uh, 68 national golds in various competitions and events. I definitely want to give myself uh, a chance to learn discuss in right. a better way. Right. Uh, I will judge where I have reached in the forthcoming World Championship selection trials. Right. Uh, if I am going in the right direction and I'm picking up the skill uh, in a good way, I'll probably invest my time and my focus into trying to play at the 2020 uh, Paralympics. Uh, but that's Simon, in Tokyo, right? That's in Tokyo. Oh, lovely. So that's the next target I have right. set for myself, but it involves a lot of hard work and learning which I'm willing to do, like always. <laughs> uh, simultaneously, my daughter has, my elder daughter has started uh, a small NGO called Wheeling Happiness. Okay. And uh, I'm also beginning to get very interested in that because the kind of results I'm seeing, this young girl has uh, uh, really making a difference and giving back to the community. What is uh, the NGO about? So it's, it's about, uh, like how the name is, Wheeling Happiness. We help people with, uh, different abilities to identify their sources of happiness. Right. Uh, I, I feel that a person um, is more ready to take on the world when your soul is happy. Yes. When your aura is happy. Absolutely. You know, like happy, happy, and happy. Smileys. It's yeah. like all smileys. <laughs> so, um, so we enable people in different disabilities from the underprivileged section so through counseling, through guidance, right. to providing the right kind of uh, assistance uh, or the aids if they need the right kind of wheelchair, the wheelchair, if they want guidance, the sports equipment. So it's a very small... Got it. Uh, it's like a mentoring uh, yes, program to get program. them back to life, to make Absolutely. them come back to life, right? Absolutely. And also giving the right kind of uh, assistive aids like the wheelchair Got or uh, an artificial limb or a kind of put them through to the right people uh, to get the funding, right. raise some fundings here and there. Right. Uh, we started small, but uh, now... Now that Devika, my elder daughter, has very seriously decided that this is what she wants to do. Wow. Uh, I think I'll join hands with her in that. That'll be and so amazing. Yeah. That'll be so amazing. So when you started this journey of your comeback, um, were there any key people or incidents which kind of triggered it for you, which inspired you to go for it? Oh, yes. Uh, that's what I say, that no success can happen without a beautiful teamwork. Yes. I'm somebody who needs help every minute of the day, whether to transfer from my chair to the bed, uh, to be able to have water, to be able to, if I can cook, I need five people passing on the things to me. Right. So definitely this journey uh, has not happened without the right kind of help. And I really have to say, no buttering up, nothing, but I have to say that Facebook came as a huge, huge support system to me. Uh, you know, you'll be surprised. Uh, I, I joined the bikers community. Mm -hmm. And uh, who in turn gave me the guidance how to be a biker again. Wow. And uh, I created an infrastructure of friends in every city that I moved. So initially when I could not afford air tickets and I would travel by train, one status update and one appeal on the Facebook would make at least have five to ten people waiting for me at the uh, railway station to help Amazing. me come out of the... Uh, the railway bogey or to give me a vehicle there because funds were not that easy Correct. that time and when right. I set off on this journey I decided I'm not going to take a penny from home wow I will do this on my own a lot of people think that I, I am a colonel's wife or a general's daughter-in-law or a colonel's daughter but trust you me 
the whole journey has been by raising my own funds and that is how facebook also helped me turn into a speaker right where people heard about my story and they called me to speak, speak. so that's that was one but the best that i would like to tell you here is that one day i was home alone mm -hmm. uh, my daughter had already left for the uh, college i was living alone in a very small room uh, in south delhi and maid did not turn up because she herself fell ill and she was Ouch. running high temperature so i was on the bed daughter left thinking maid will come my diaper was full um the pan that was kept on the bedside was full and uh, the the battery in my phone was dead and i could not reach out for the wheelchair or for the charger it wasn't kept close and that's when the only um a battery which was there was in my ipad the the laptop actually right. so i signed into facebook i put my location and requested anybody around here can you come down to help within within 5 minutes i had 20 people knocking at my door amazing Amazing. So you know, so that's the kind of help that's that the power is, of yeah, um, Facebook, Facebook, and social uh, outreach, yeah. right? Amazing. Um, so if used positively, yes, it it really supports. Yeah, yeah. I've never mm -hmm. had. Um, they say the infrastructure is not supportive. I never had to think if there is a ramp in that particular area. Will that particular town or place of stay where I'll be going for competitions or I'll be traveling for a lecture will be wheelchair amicable or not? Right. because i always had faith that there'll be friends waiting for me to battle that how lovely is that and i i think uh, i think one of the biggest challenges that most people who are on a wheelchair have is the inhibition that will they be able to manage or the infrastructure's not right you know uh, that's because we're shy of asking of help i'm somebody who lives on help right i am not shy of asking for help and that's what i say that uh, try it there'll always be a helping hand coming forward and i think it's such a yeah, beautiful thought it's it's uh, you know we we close doors on ourselves right and if we don't do that uh, again going back to the same point you made that you know it's what you how you perceive yes, yourself the world yes. is going to perceive you that way right yeah, i'm so, i'm intelligent i'm independent but at the same time i'm somebody who needs help and i ask for it when i need it fair enough awesome do you think the way your parents brought you up had a huge uh, impact on the way you were able to battle with challenges in your life definitely um uh, you know your impressionable and formative years uh, are your childhood and if you are given that uh, confidence as a child and you're bringing up is the right way it it really impacts your whole life's time but it doesn't say that i did not have uh, tough teens mm -hmm. um i was a rebel always <laughs> i would do things which were out of the box <laughs> i think you still so, do that don't you <laughs> yeah so it it wasn't um, heard of a girl trying to uh, you know ride bikes at that age in in right. 80s right. so it would scare my parents off because bikes were something which were with men and men. with yeah. Yeah. so talking to unknown people just to borrow a bike and ride so it was too much for them to handle so i'm saying i did have my share of differences with them <laughs> where they didn't uh, fair enough i think which yeah. is a part of but the parenting. basic values yeah. uh, like i said my father i would always see uh, we were always on the move right uh, so i've always seen him adapt very quickly to change i've always seen my mother you know make uh, uh, the house whichever house whether it was a little reappropriated barrack we got or yeah. a big plush bungalow of britishers time we were given somehow they would manage within the budget and uh, yeah. they would make it a beautiful home very quick to adapt right uh, and uh, my dad like i said always switch to solution mode and right. he he we would you know then laugh and say that's very jugadu <laughs> <laughs> but i think what i learned out of it was that you should always have a plan b yes yes if this doesn't work this will work yeah. plus i have seen as him as a very honest both uh when i say my mother is my hero not because she is an achiever of medals or blah blah or, or she has some awards to her credit but why because whatever she did she did with full honesty right so even if she was making food she would make it make it to perfection hmm. she would put her heart and soul in it yeah. uh, nothing was time pass for her right so that's something i have learned that even if you do a small thing but do it with full perfection and your hard work and honesty 
I think uh, that itself is very soul satisfying and inspirational and keeps yeah. you rejuvenated and motivated. How wonderful. So does that impact your parenting style when you're... It does. It yeah. does. Because for me, see, how my parents brought me up, uh, made me face my share of disability as a child. Right. And yet gave me the warmth and love. And then I just replicated it when my daughter had an accident. Right. And look where she is today. She herself is uh, a Queen's Young Leader awardee. Um, uh, now she is also turning a speaker. She's working in the sustainable uh, right. development goals. And she is a youth council head for the Commonwealth countries. And Amazing. she's traveling with her concept, doing a PhD in disability sports psychology. So Wow. And the younger one uh, is again a confident young lady. She she is um, just joined a corporate, uh, finished her MBA. Wow! So the, both the girls have emerged as good. The best is that they have emerged good human beings. Yes, uh, that's more important. Yes. And one thing that I'm very proud of as a mother: both my children uh, eat every sabji under the planet, <laughs> okay. under the sun. They they can so. eat tori, tinda, loki, bengan, karela. <laughs> <laughs> Kundru, <laughs> Peta. <laughs> and my friends ask me, how do you do that? Yeah. And I think that is something I've learned from my parents, how to uh, encourage kids to eat every vegetable. That's amazing. Actually, we used to have a little joke, you know, so I'm trained that way as well. I don't yeah. know if it's a generation thing or whatever because we're quite close yeah. in age. But um, my nani had this rule, though. If you would say no to a vegetable, you were given only that for the next nine meals. And you know, how long can you starve, right? At some point, you'll eat it. So it yeah. was an so, army uh, background again. Uh, yes. So it was a bit of an army rule that yeah. you have to do it. And Nani ne diya to chup chup khalo. An army is one atmosphere which is very patriotic, yes. which is uh, very caring. Yes. We're, we're always ready for the unseen. Absolutely. There's always an emergency uh, yes. lined up somewhere. So. Uh, Overall, I really thank that yeah. kind of it. It's, it's a good mix of taking care of each other, looking after each other, um, then adapting to new stations, traveling. Yeah, it, it gives you a variety of exposure. I mean, absolutely does. So, would there be any parenting advice you'd like to give to other mothers who are probably watching this show? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I think um, um, the best way to teach is to set an example. Yeah, lead by example. Lead by example. And uh, your team will never be what you want it to be. You will slowly and gradually see they are who you are. Absolutely. So it's best to be the person that you want them to be. Yeah. That's the best way to uh, uh, nurse your kids. <laughs> Perfect advice. Yes. John Maxwell has said it as well because it's yeah. one of his, um, you know, he always says that uh, you get... Uh, uh, you know, your team is a reflection of who you are. Yes. So, so I, I, and that works. I think yeah. it's, yeah. I have uh, really practiced this to be able to preach it here. Amazing. Amazing. So just since you're on the topic of women, you know, in the women community, there's a huge debate and it happens quite often, you know, in terms of working women um, of how to balance work life. You know, sometimes they say that, you know, a woman who's really outgoing, she's sacrificing on home front, she's not able to deliver, but you kind of seem to have it all. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, what I uh, what I did was, um, firstly, uh, I made a conscious effort to plan the day, one day ahead. Right. Like be prepared for the next, next day, day. Uh, have things ready. So uh, a bit of thought given to the planning yes. uh, keeps the stress away. Definitely. And it also, if, if your fridge is stocked and, you know, you have planned what are we going to have the next day and uh, a little bit of time management helps. Right. It, it, it just, just, again, it's an extension of how you plan your day a day ahead. Right. Uh, I even planned a week ahead. You know, I sit down with the family and say, okay, set the priority list. Right. Uh, and I don't live with guilt. Right. Because any journey whether it is your child's journey, your journey, any journey is a mix of a bit of sacrifices here and there. Yeah. And we cannot achieve anything, anything, whether it is a small milestone. I'm not talking about international events or competitions or medals or accolades. Even in your general life, if you want to achieve something that you have set for yourself or for the family, invariably, involuntarily, there'll be some sacrifice somewhere involved. 
Yeah. You know, you will have to cut down on one thing to have to the other it. thing. So that's how the life cycle works. Right. And that's how everything works. Right. So don't carry the guilt. Yeah. The whole problem starts when we start carrying the guilt of not being able to do this, not being able to do this. Nobody is a superhuman. Right. As long as you are balancing it and you're getting the priority list right, uh, you are good. Yeah. That's what I feel. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I think that's great advice. So... <laughs> In your entire journey of come back, like who do you attribute or who was your guiding force? Or who was your biggest support? Who kind of assisted you? In I, I cannot, uh, I think the biggest support, uh, no, I will say it in a very generic way that was a positive attitude. Right. And the will to learn. Wow. Uh, I was open to learning. And when my attitude was positive that, okay, I'm going to do this and do it in the happy way. Right. And I'm going to learn how to do it. So um, once you are willing to do, do these two things, right. you're very open to seeking out the right kind of help. Right. Uh, and if I say that I attribute my journey to one person, that wouldn't be fair. Of course, the permanent fixtures have been my two daughters. Yes. And uh, But there have been various people in the journey who have volunteered their time, who have come together at various stages uh, in various uh, journeys that I set out on for whether it was a short put journey they were set of different right. people when it was short, a, a, a javelin journey it's it was a swimming journey whether it was a biker journey and then when I was uh, fighting with the policies there were different mentors and guides so I take this opportunity the list is so long yeah. that anybody who has touched my life in some way I extend my heartfelt gratitude to you today from this huge platform of Facebook Live because if you're there, you're hearing and you know you have touched my life and even if in the smallest way, I extend my heartfelt thanks. So, Deepaji, based on your journey, what would, what would be your advice to the parents, the immediate family, you know, the parents, the, the cousins, the relatives, the spouse, the children of people who have who are differently able, you know, as to how should they encourage them and give them the courage to yeah. get out and be someone in their lives? I think uh, the first, of course, uh, the advice would be uh, that please don't suffer from the stereotype. Yeah. Each journey is different. Each person is different. Each one has different set of abilities. Uh, you support them in a way that you create opportunities for them. Right. Uh, give them... Um, you know, uh, a certain things in certain way that they evolve and right. they don't stagnate. Right. Uh, and acceptance is a huge, huge. Sometimes I see the family struggling because they have not even accepted. Uh, yeah. And then um, remember that everybody has a challenge of their own. Yes. Nobody. Say, we we uh, focus on more visible challenges because if somebody is physically challenged or has some kind of a physical ailment right. it is visible to all yes it you think you get victimized yeah. but trust me turn around look around you will find everybody has their own challenge emotional financial social you know it it could be uh, not getting along in a relationship it could be not being in the right job being ha not happy so everyone has a set of challenges yeah so don't let others judge you for yours. Right. right. Uh, and that can only happen if you are in acceptance and you have worked your way around. It. It's, it's, it's all right. It is not something that we chose. Right. So we don't have to carry any guilt. We don't have to carry um, any burden emotionally for that situation. Best is to learn, to seek uh, the right kind of counseling and help. That's something we don't do in our country. Right. Uh, the counseling is only meant for, uh, I believe, nut cases or something. You know, uh, it's yeah. good to learn. Absolutely, it's, it's, that's what uh, that's what I'm trying to achieve as a life coach. That you know, teaching people that you go to a, like how you would go to a spa for a facial. Yes. Go to a life coach. You know, once in a yes. while for yes. a clean up of your mindset. I, I, you know? I, I do that. Yeah. And I openly say that. And I am so fortunate to have uh, uh, Preeti on my side, and she she keeps sorting my thoughts right. whenever I have a challenge. So Amazing. Uh, it, it's important. And that's what my daughter also says. Luckily, uh, I have uh, a mentor or a coach in my, my daughters. Yes. I learn a lot from them. From the children, yes. yes. 
and I know we are a very unique family where, uh, and we love it. We love to be different. Uh, they say winners don't do different things. They do things. They do things differently, yes. and we do it differently. <laughs> In my house, my children take me to play. <laughs> Normally, the mothers take the children to, to play. play. So this time, when I had gone for my Asian Games, right. both my daughters were there to support me and you know Beautiful. help me. So amazing. Yeah, I mean it's it's fun. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> what have you discovered about yourself during this entire journey as the person Deepa Malik? Like, what is Deepa Malik all about? I think I have uh, I have lived uh, up to uh, that thought of my parents when they gave me this name. Mm. They called me a Deepa, and I felt that it is always better to light a candle, mm. a lamp. That right. is what I meant. Then to curse the dark. Right. And uh, in my journey, what I have learned is um, there's a very beautiful book that I read in the early stages of my paralysis, and that's the secret. Yes. Yes. Actually, uh, it's it's really the power of mind and power of intention. Yes. Uh, when you are really, really passionate, uh, have hobbies. I'm yes. so so grateful to the fact that. I was passionate about certain yes. hobbies. I loved riding. Adventure I loved sports. adventure sports. I loved sports. Yeah. So because I really I was passionate about those hobbies, yes. I had something to fall back to. Exactly. They became my sources of happiness. Right. So please identify your sources of happiness. Exactly. Uh, that's very important. So what is the mindset one needs to be a champion like you? Oh, <laughs> 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 my God. I think... Um, like I said, that the basic qualities uh, will be very cliche once. That's uh, okay. It will okay. be very cliche. I think when, it's, but I am telling you, is the mother of skill, right? Yes. So, but I, what I have discovered in my journey that these are not dictionary words. Yeah. These are not words meant to be put in quotations in as Monday motivation or Friday motivation. <laughs> or, you know, it's it is true. You success demands sacrifice. Yes. Success demands focus. Yes. It demands consistency. Right. It demands time management. It demands uh, learning. Even today, with 23 international medals and so many awards to my credit, when I go, I say I'm going to my coach. Yeah. I am going to train. Yes. I am doing my training. Yes. So it is a journey of consistency, perseverance and you have to be honest to yourself. Right. If you're not, I mean, the coach can say, do this training. The dietitian can say, eat this. The physiotherapist say, ma'am, we need to do this. If I am not honest right. in doing it, you won't achieve. So Correct. this is the actual true recipe. I have come to realize that. Amazing. It, it might sound very cliche. but No, it's not. I think it's, it's, it's important that people hear any, it over and over again. Any success story you, you yeah. hear... There is an ingredient of consistency, learning, perseverance, never give up. Yes. Keep learning, keep practicing. Yes. Absolutely. Keep and a positive attitude. Success always leaves clues as uh, long as you can pick them up and yes. apply them to your life. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. So what's next for Deepa Malik? Next for Deepa Malik, of course, um, well, um, I want to travel a lot. I, I have a personal wish list also. Right. Uh, though I owe my time to the training for which I have decided and dedicated uh, myself to that. I do want to learn, discuss, and I do want to try a hand right. at the World Championship. So that's on my sports front. Uh, but I continue to battle for certain policies. Mm -hmm. um, for example, job opportunity policy for uh, the Paralympic medals, etc. So that's something I am uh, waiting and writing and tweeting about. <laughs> right, right. And uh, I have been fortunate to get an opportunity to work as stakeholder in um, Honorable Minister Hardeep Puri Sir's uh, Ministry for Urban and Smart City Development. Okay. So definitely my role will come in the infrastructural uh, wheelchair, ME cable, and disable friendly infrastructure. Uh, to bring inclusivity. Lovely. I am uh, going to work a lot with my daughter in Wheeling Happiness Foundation. Right. So that I can uh, make a difference in someone's life and touch their life. And um, since both of us will be able to understand their challenges better, yes. it's like 
give back time now Lovely. and uh, have more deepas come up <laughs> definitely you hurt you heal you yeah. help isn't yeah. it so yes. the helping stage has come now yes yes, yes. amazing so we got to go with the traditional rapid fire round okay. now oh, okay God. that's uh, inspired by karan johar <laughs> yeah, yeah so we do He's... have a hamper <laughs> do we have a hamper to we, win we do actually <laughs> oh okay yeah. that's but, a good and incentive and since it's only you playing you anyways win it okay oh yeah <laughs> so i didn't realize that wow we win <laughs> even before we begin but yeah. we'll do a quick one um you know the deal uh, a word or a sentence which okay uh, which is difficult i'm a very talkative jabbering person so <laughs> <laughs> okay cool so shall we yeah okay that's it what's the one thing that's essential to living life to the fullest celebrating life awesome what are the top 5 priorities in your life um children mm-hmm. um oh god top 5 priorities <laughs> okay i never really thought everything is like a priority for me i, I just love life <laughs> So of course my children uh parents so uh, children parents like family is first okay. uh being honest to my sports training mm-hmm. uh, in, as long as i'm training um um yeah this is difficult it is <laughs> <laughs> uh i want to travel mm-hmm. i want to read a lot of books mm-hmm. i want to give a lot of time to reading catch up on a lot of movies ooh nice yeah nice. for now this Okay. <laughs> Maybe it'll change after. Uh, of course, it uh, does. It's over I mean, time. We keep. What's your secret to time management? I um, I am punctual. Actually, I go by the clock. I respect the the clock, uh, and uh, I make a routine and a time plan for myself, and I respect it. And that helps me um, m- handle my challenges of bladder and bowel, etc. So right. it's a good habit. which they say how do you do so much with this kind of a body i can because i plan well amazing yeah okay three daily disciplines that you cannot live without three daily disciplines i have to do my uh, training i mean mm-hmm. whether it is in in terms of physiotherapy or or sports this thing right. so uh, to give the body going so that is one thing i don't give up and that's why i look the way i look in spite of 20 years you of, look pretty uh, hot <laughs> yeah and the uh, other thing is i love to cook Ooh. i cook one thing a day if i'm not traveling so wow. i love cooking and uh, the third thing i don't miss is watching at least an hour of television <laughs> it could be anything anything <laughs> that's fun the best advice you've ever received the best advice i've ever received um I think that's from my father who has taught me never to give up. Okay. If you could pick a single superpower, what would it be and why? Um I would definitely I could I be the construction man? <laughs> like you have a he-man, a uh, superman. So if I'm a construction man then I can quickly make ramps anywhere and <laughs> how sweet. <laughs> yeah. I'm like poof and there's a ramp. So you see a person looking at the flight of stairs and I like poof and it turns into like a gradient for a wheelchair person to go up. I think that's a beautiful vision and yes. maybe we could all work on it together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Your key to staying motivated. Uh I think my love for outdoors. What does Deepa say when she talks to herself? You're hot. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing you notice when you meet a person? I think their smile, how happy uh, aura they carrying. Right. Yeah. Okay. One thing you wish you could change about yourself. I think my love for food. <laughs> okay. I think I need to change that too. <laughs> I, I I can dream food. <laughs> and it's very and that's something you really have to work on because as a sports person your diet is different and then yes. sitting on the chair you can't Correct. really put on a lot of weight because it becomes difficult for your own self to handle your body but right. i love food <laughs> an idea that changed your life an idea that changed my life that whole um, whole thought of breaking the stereotype how people perceive people in disabilities right your best advice to your daughters ambika and devika live your own dreams your life in three words um outdoors adventure mm-hmm. and uh, 
I think, how do you define that in one word when you want to give back, okay. like a helping hand? Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Something no one knows about you. Hmm. Something no one knows about you. I think that you'll have to ask my daughters <laughs> or my husband. <laughs> okay. Have you ever, um, um, is there a plan to do a biopic on your life? Uh, well, I've been, um, I've been fortunate and lucky. Excel Entertainment, uh, Ritesh Sidwani and Farhan Akhtar have approached me for that. Ooh, and, lovely. Yeah, and I think the script work is almost done. Amazing, um, amazing. Very soon uh, they'll be telling me who will be playing my role. So Wow. Let's see. That's, so that's, gonna, that's uh, happening. and That's going to be a tough role to play for any woman. I think uh, I, it, it's, it's about a protagonist uh, who is 45 years old and 46 rather. Uh, if they're taking the Rio Paralympic as, right. as the main this thing, and then who has daughters who are almost 26 Correct. and 23 years old. So I'm very happy that if whoever plays it will be somebody who will really believe in the story. Yes. So someone who has the heart in the right places will be playing this role. Right. So I'm sure, uh, one thing is very sure that whoever takes on the role will be very passionate about it. So there'll be a lot of life coming on to the character. How movie. wonderful. So, and I think biopics are beautiful because yeah, if, it's, it's uh, just, you know, when um, you have a story playing on the cinema, somehow it impacts too many lives and people get the essence of it in a short time. But I just, uh, um, I, I really want to see my husband dancing around the trees. <laughs> <laughs> the final Bollywood dream yes. every woman has. <laughs> okay. So I said, how are, they, uh, how are they going to show the, because he's such a quiet person and... Uh, he, you really, we, we laugh and say you have to pay him to speak even a word. So <laughs> I really want to know how he's actually, you know, uh, because our love story was also very, so non-stereotype. It was right. not the, the way it is seen or defined or perceived. It, nobody ever said I love you. Right, right. So I want to see how they show that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, the, you did well. Yeah, okay. You think you did well? I don't know. You tell me. I, mean, <laughs> I think you did enough? fantastic. <laughs> and would it be okay if before we kind of end the show that we take a couple of questions of from course, the audience? I think yeah? that's what a uh, live is all about. And I'm, I, I hope people are even watching. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. They are. Hi. hi okay, there it is. So I can. I can. I also you can hold pick this. that up as well. Up. Uh, yeah, and oh, um, nice. if you want, you can choose the question, or if you want, I'll be happy to choose. Yeah, yeah. You do that. I'm not even wearing my reading glasses. Okay, but so that's something that, people don't know about me. I wear reading glasses. Oh, she wears reading glasses. Okay, but before that, you get your hamper, right? Uh, okay. It's a small one, but oh, you but know, it, I, I, uh, you know gift the, is a gift is a gift. Uh, <laughs> great things come in small packages. I, I, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. The package looks lovely. We, you want me to open it or I keep it for later? You can keep it for later. Okay. So can I place it here? Of course. For the time being? Of course. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Oh, I have Lena there. That's, that's okay. a friend, uh, a biker buddy. Oh, really? Yeah. Does she have a question for you? I think they know me. We, we cook a lot together. So I'm sure she knows me. <laughs> okay, so we have a question from a guy called Mr. Prakash and he's okay. asking you, how is it like to be in a rally? Oh, it's fantastic. But uh, again, um, uh, you really have to learn uh, the tricks of the trade. Uh, yes. Don't just go there because it is a high risk activity. And uh, for me, who is in love with, uh, for me, it was also symbolic uh, from this wheel, these wheels to those wheels. Right. It was almost like reclaiming my life because right. people felt sorry for me for being on wheels. So I wanted to be on the rally wheels, behind a wheel, on the wheels, <laughs> in a way that people get a shock treatment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so for me, uh, that is what the rallies were all about. And it also gave me an opportunity to battle for the licenses for the invalid carriages and for people in disabilities to come forward and be a part. So... Uh, it 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 ended up being a great journey. Uh, wow. I love it. I love it there. So there's a message from my mom, okay? It's not a question, but I'll read it out to you. Oh, it says, so Subhagya Behel says, Deepa, you are very inspiring indeed. <laughs> wow. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a question from Jyoti. She says, how should I find inspiration to do something better? Uh, I think you have to continuously be willing to evolve and uh, update yourself when I say update yourself you know like 
we we love painting we make a couple of paintings and we are done with it right we really don't take it to a step higher right or we don't evolve so i think uh, inspiration uh, you can keep yourself inspired by continuously upgrading yourself exactly. your desires your dreams right. um, so, so that dreams. keeps yeah so that keeps you going wow then we have a question from a gentleman called Omkar and he's okay. asking what was the toughest part of changing the mindset of the people around you uh i think the toughest part was uh, it just happened to me this morning i was getting off at the building right down there right and uh, uh, my attendant girl took out the wheelchair right. and while she was placing the wheelchair uh, the security guard of course with very good intentions no offense meant to anybody right he says uh, sir hospital ke liye aap wahan utariye ouch you get my point yes so the, though he was being very conscious very helpful but the immediate reaction was that if it's a wheelchair it means it somebody means somebody is unwell well yeah yeah so that was the hardest to break that right. uh, for me the wheelchair is a lifestyle right it's a permanent fixture which doesn't mean that for last two decades i'm going to be unwell right and i think that's something which inspired me to do crazy stuff like paramotoring doing a flying fox crossing a river and participating in continuously uh, taking the challenge of learning new sport just to tell them that uh, i'm not a patient right right so that was the hardest to break because that is how people look at you the moment they see you on a wheelchair Okay, one last question yeah. I'll take from a guy called Yash. He's asking, "What was it like to win the Padma Shri Award?" Oh, but <laughs> I think Padma Shri Award was an uh, it's an absolute honor because uh, that is something uh, which you don't just get. Yes, you have to earn it. Yeah, and uh, it is um, so. It also validates your journey. Yeah. that it has been in the right direction yes when i set off on this journey um uh, and when i wanted to jump in a river climb a mountain doing a rally people thought i had lost it right um some people thought that uh, it's never enough for her yeah some felt i was an attention seeker hmm hmm but i'm happy with that accusation because that's exactly what i want right. i want people to pay attention uh to changing their mindsets right. through the activities that i do uh i have broken the barriers of gender the physical disability the age right and uh, if padma shri has come my way it validates that i it was all right doing what i was doing yes and somewhere my life has contributed it has not just been a personal journey yeah it has left an impact and such a huge impact uh because a padma shri normally comes to you when you have uh, made a contribution towards the building of a nation in a yes. particular field yes so uh, i think that's a huge compliment wow and a, a huge take away because it wasn't a personal journey it yeah. e- eventually turned out to be a journey which impacted my country yeah in the right direction Yes and I, I mean you say that and I get goosebumps because oh. you know it's just when it yeah. comes to India and you see your flag flying yes. in the air it's I, I a beautiful feeling I cannot stand up uh, for a national anthem yeah but when I win a medal a national anthem comes up yeah. so it's beautiful Awesome. I think it's been such an amazing uh, conversation with you thank Deepanji thank you thank you so much and it For me, like I said, it was a tick on my wish list. But <laughs> <laughs> well, before and, I let you go, just one final question. You know, yes. for somebody who is at the verge of a comeback, you know that moment when yes. the delicate moment when you could go down or you could just take off. Uh, is there a message you like to give to that person who's on, sitting on that edge? I think. Um, uh, can I say that in Hindi? Of course, bilkul. one of my favorite uh, poem WhatsApp bilkul. forwards. Bilkul. Um, ईश्वर पे अगर भरोसा है ईश्वर पे अगर भरोसा है तो जो किस्मत में लिखा है वो पाओगे लेकिन अगर खुद पे भरोसा है तो ईश्वर वो लिखेगा जो तुम चाहोगे अमेजिंग ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल सो इट्स ऑल अबाउट सेल्फ बिलीफ बिलीव इन योर सेल्फ अमेजिंग एंड दैट्स दैट्स द जंप स्टार्ट वंडरफुल वंडरफुल 
Thank you so much for Thank being you. on this India's biggest comebacks episode four oh show, God, which is designed and keeping you, you in mind. So thank you so much, Deepa ji. It's Thank been, you. It's been an Thank honor. you so much it's for having me here. It's Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. So keep watching India's biggest comebacks, and we're going to be back soon with another special guest for you on the episode five. So keep watching, and there will be a few links on the post. Uh, you know, supporting Deepa ji's uh, NGO and supporting our NGO where we are supporting Kerala make a comeback. Um, do keep supporting us so that we can make a difference together. Thank you so much, and we'll be back. Love you guys.